one that I recall was on 7th Avenue and 58th Street uh, called Shell City. To give you some other experiences that I had, um, we had a couple of department stores downtown, one by the name of Richards and another by the name of Birdeyes. Uh, Birdeyes later became Macy's. And so if you were black and you went into one of these uh, department stores and you tried on a hat, you just bought that hat. If you tried on a pair of shoes, you just bought that pair of shoes. So blacks were not allowed to, because of Jim Crow and the ordinances, blacks were not allowed to try on clothing in these stores, but they were allowed to purchase the clothing. I can recall uh, one day, as a young child, I was about five, six years old, I had to use the restroom and my mother was shopping in Richards and I told my mom I needed to go to the bathroom. And all of a sudden she grabbed my arm and we went running down Flagler Street. And as a little kid, I wondered, mom, I gotta go to the bathroom, why are we running? So she ran into the state slash federal courthouse at the time and we went down into the basement and I, I remember running into the bathroom using it. Coming out, as I was coming out, I wanted to get some water and you had one water fountain that said colored and the other water fountain that said white. So my mother naturally led me to the colored water fountain and I drank water and I stood there as a child and I looked at the other water fountain and I said, well mom, what does white water taste like? <laughs> It was, it was, I mean, nowadays I can laugh at it. Back then I was very innocent as a child, so it was a serious question. I didn't know the difference between colored water and white water. And that's the way that Miami was segregated back in those days. And when I say in those days, up until 1965. As a matter of fact, I'll uh, pause and point out to you that public schools in Dade County were not desegregated until 1967. That's when I was in the seventh grade. And so that's why up until that time, I told you I graduated from Archbishop Curley High School. Private schools were desegregated long before that. My sister attended the Academy of the Assumption, um, a private school. Um, again, public schools were segregated. I can also reminisce and tell you uh, many other stories about Miami, um, personally that I experienced, but Let's go back to a broader picture. There is a Negro police precinct, and I think many of the uh, Ransom Exchange students this year had an opportunity to actually go in and tour uh, that Negro police precinct, uh, which is now a museum. Well, the reason that it's called the Negro police precinct is because of segregation. You had a police station for whites, and you had a police station for blacks and the black police station was called the Negro Police Precinct. Well, oddly enough, black policemen were not able or not allowed to arrest anyone that was white. And so you had a situation where you had black police, um, you know, they were attempting to exert their authority in the black community. Uh, this personally impacted me. One day I was telling the Ransom Exchange students that my father, happened to be washing his car uh, in front of his house in Overtown uh, on a Sunday morning. So the black policeman rode up and told him, look, sir, you can't wash a car while church is going on. So my father explained to the police that this was the only day that he had off and that he needed to wash his car. So the police threatened him and said, well, you know, if you're gonna keep washing this car on Sunday after I've told you not to do so, I'm gonna have to take you to jail. So he took me and my sister, uh, it was only us two at the time born. The police took my dad, me and my sister to this Negro police precinct. And I can remember sitting there uh, while my dad had to go before the judge and my sister and I were reminiscing yesterday, she remembers going to this police precinct as well as a little kid, but back then it was a real police precinct. It wasn't a museum as it is nowadays. Well, the Jim Crow era, Segregation, um, eras of segregation here in Miami Dade um, also impacted the public beaches. Okay, so you have a beach called Virginia Key. Many of you know of Virginia Key Beach. That was the beach for coloreds only. Only black people went to Virginia Key. 
And the reason for that, give you a little history behind that as well, at Virginia Key, that is where the Navy trained the black soldiers prior to World War I. Well, as you might imagine, there was a situation where the white soldiers refused to train with the black soldiers, so they had to have a separate installation. That installation was Virginia Key. So the white soldiers trained over on Miami Beach, the black soldiers trained at Virginia Beach. But around 1945, there was an effort to integrate other beaches here in Miami, Dade County. That effort was led by several blacks who one day decided they would go over to Hallover Beach and stage what was called a wade-in, sort of like a sit-in, okay? Now, it was interesting because, um, you know, the blacks expected to be arrested for going into the water in a whites-only beach. But to their surprise, they were not arrested. And years later, they found out the reason why they weren't arrested is because Miami Beach did not want the negative publicity. They were afraid if there was an incident at one of the whites only beaches, people from up north would not come down and patronize the beaches. So the blacks were allowed to wade in, go into the water, and enjoy the water. But the black beach was still the beach for colored. Now, back in this time period that I'm talking about, and that would be around the 1930s into the 1940s, um, prior to desegregation, the question becomes, well, how did the black people get over to Virginia Key? You all realize that Rickenbacker Causeway uh, wasn't built until uh, 1947, okay? So prior to this time, if you wanted to go to Virginia Key, you had to go by boat, okay? 